Um, okay, great to great to get that win. Um, you know, obviously we're. Uh, um, I thought our sharing was terrific overall. You know, I thought we were a little sloppy in the first half, uh, but once we settled into the game, overall our defense was really good. Uh, kept them out. Besides, uh, they got a few transition baskets in the first half. I thought we did a really good job. And then, you know, unfortunately for us, it's just we have to, you know, adjust without Caleb. And, uh, you know, my heart breaks for him that he couldn't play today. Like, he's had such a good year. And he impacts winning in so many ways besides just the, the, the box score and just the stats. And, uh, you know, we're going to be without him for some time. I don't know what that time is. Uh, but we have to adjust. We have to step up. Just like we've had to do throughout the year with different injuries, whether it be Jeremy or Mark or Tyrese, and um, you know we looked at some different lineups. We went bigger. Uh, TJ and Sean, you know, getting them more minutes was a really good thing for us tonight. And we need to move on quickly and get ready for you know a really tough game on Saturday. But I'm proud of the team responding, you know, from Saturday and uh, to to get this win. Yeah, exactly. Do you think you want to go big going forward now without without Caleb available? Because I know Jalen didn't play it a lot tonight. Well, so. well, naturally, you can't look at the team the same way without Caleb or without any of those guards. And you know, you guys don't get a chance to see our guys in practice. And the job that TJ's done in practice, he's gotten better and better. He just needs to he needs some game reps. Uh, Sean, uh, he's shown many different times. And so what happens is. Mark and Flip are such key guys, it's hard to get minutes at times. And so for a third perimeter spot, you know, Mark can play there, TJ can play there, um, and TJ provides a shooting on the floor. You know, you, you, you better know where he's at when he's out there. Even though he didn't hit tonight, all four of his threes are, they're, they're in and out. They're right there. But, you know, I talked to him before the game, don't value your minutes off of making or missing shots. Like, you work too hard, that's going to happen. You just throw yourself into competing. And I thought he did a good job of that tonight. Mark Mitchell is one of the best three-point shooters in the ACC play after starting the year one for 22. What changed in the middle of the year for him? You know, Mark is, uh, like, I can't tell you how proud I am of Mark. And, you know, for me as a head coach, there's, there's, there's a few of these guys that have been there from day one. From the minute I got the job that I called that first day that I wanted to be a part of this. And Mark is one of those guys. And you think about, you know, when you uh, commit to somebody, vice versa, he commits to us, we commit to him. You go through ups and downs together. And Mark always, literally always responds. He always lets you coach him. You need to get on him sometimes to be more aggressive. And uh, at halftime, did that today. And, uh, I just love to see ask about his three-point shooting, though. It was Christmas break was a big thing. And coming back and just trusting your work and being decisive. You know, and uh, he's done that. Uh, he's played inside out, not outside in. That's different. And he's a complete player. Like, he just he does so much. I don't know that he gets the credit that he probably should nationally uh, or even in our league. When you talk about key guys, uh, I think anybody would love to have Mark Mitchell on their team because he does so much besides just the three-point shooting, but you love when it goes in. Uh, John, Dick was plus 19 on the boards. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I just thought we had great effort. You know, and it, it helps when you have, you know, off the bench, Sean has four offensive rebounds, uh, Ryan has three. Uh, just collectively, we've learned we have to gain rebound. And, you know, early in the year, I mean, you guys asked me a lot of questions. We've talked about it as a staff a lot, like how are we going to rebound when we're smaller? And we've done a great job defensive rebounding. That hasn't been a thing. Offensively, we've gotten better as the season's gone on. And uh, that's something we're going to have to do moving forward. Because those extra, winning those extra possessions tonight, that those, those plays added up. John, at Miami last week, you made a point to say how understated Jeremy's career has been. As a decorated Duke guard yourself, what has been most special about what Jeremy's done thus far? For me, it's, uh, it starts with his commitment to Duke. That's the first thing. Uh, it's so easy to go other places or to point the finger 
or to leave school early, period. And uh, he's been committed to Duke every step of the way. Uh, the second thing <laughs> is how he's about winning. And tonight, and he's 19 points on 11 shots. He could have had 30 tonight. Uh, I don't think any of you guys would disagree with me. Like, he just played within himself. Uh, he played both sides of the ball. And I think the, the test of a, a Duke player who's been through a lot of moments, you know, he plays his best when the, mo the moment's the biggest. And uh, he's not afraid of anything. So I think that gives our team a lot of confidence when he's out there and you can tell he's not faced. Does that mean you never make mistakes? No, of course so. Everybody makes mistakes. But for me, what Jeremy's done in his approach, being a team guy, being a Duke guy, uh, look, his legacy is going to be felt uh, in a big way, especially doing it, it's different doing it in 2024. You know, it's not doing it in, no offense to guys who have done it in 2010, <laughs> who have done it in you know, other times. It's a different age, so to have a four-year senior like Jeremy, uh, that's a special thing. Can I follow up? Okay. Yeah. Just real quick. Uh, what, how much do you think part of his legacy is to the transition from the end of coach and the start of what you've done, winning a championship in Greensboro, and who knows this? I think there's no question. You know, he's, he's going to – he's the guy who forwards, you know, the – this amazing, unique succession and transition. And, you know, Jeremy's the one guy who could say, man, I coached Kale over me for two years, and now Coach Shire's bugging me for two years. Like, he's, he's the one guy that can say that. And, uh, you know, he's, um, his leadership also, no matter what, you have to be open to things that are different because I've told you guys this before, it's no secret. Like, I'm not trying to be Coach K, nor can I ever be him. And so, for him, the, the first year of the transition. Basically, you have all new teammates, you have a new, coach, new coaching staff, even though me and him have known each other for a long time. And uh, here he is. You know, he's put our team in position last year to win the ACC championship. This year, I feel we're poised and right there with anybody to make a run. But a lot of it is because of him and what he's done.